reaction to Trump's criticism of the WHO. Let's go to Katrina Yu in Beijing. Katrina, what have we been hearing from Beijing? Well, China and the U.S. have been engaging in a bit of war of words regarding the coronavirus pandemic. And Beijing really sees uh, that Washington, in their opinion, is trying to simply shift the blame when it comes to the criticism of the World Health Organization. That's been very much echoed in state media reports today. A lot of headlines. For example, here we've got uh, an editorial from the Global Times, which is a state media newspaper, very much attacking uh, Trump and his decision to withdraw funding from the WHO saying that it is a move against humanity and it sets a horrible precedent at a time when the world really should be rallying behind the agency. It also says uh, that Trump really is using this as some sort of political ammunition to try to bolster his chances of re-election as well. And conversely, state media are painting China as the opposite, kind of uh, being very active and taking a kind of leadership role in this global fight against the pandemic, uh, reminding the public that China donated $20 million to the agency in March and has since then sent plane loads of medical supplies, testing kits um, and other funds to more than 80 countries since then. Katrina, there's been a lot of speculation, as we all know, about um, China's transparency during this process. Um, given the fact that you're there, are you getting a sense of how people in China are reacting to those allegations that there should have been more transparency and there wasn't? Definitely. I think people here genuinely believe that there is a downward trend in infections, just evidenced by the government's open, opening up of China. People are going back to work. The economy is getting started again. But as to whether these numbers that we have, these official figures, are accurate, there are a lot of questions. China maintains that there have only been about 82,000 cases of COVID-19 across the country. And that's much less in terms of numbers when you compare it to the US or many European countries. And that has raised eyebrows. And in addition to that, the Associated Press has come out saying that uh, China's National Health Commission actually warned China's leaders about the severity of this outbreak as early as January 14, saying that this could really develop into, I quote, a major public event and it's the most severe challenge they faced since SARS in 2003. But it was only six days later that the Communist Party announced to China and to the world that there was this outbreak and this, that it was very severe. So questions are being asked as to why the government was not uh, so forthcoming with that information. And on top of that, we know at a more local level, um, uh, in Wuhan, in Hubei province, the original epicenter of the outbreak, doctors who tried to sound the alarm about this outbreak as early as the end of December or indeed silenced or punished for doing so. And because of this kind of patchy track record, there are a lot of questions now as to whether the Chinese government are continuing to really be transparent when it comes to the scale of the outbreak here in China. Uh, Katrina, you live for us in Beijing. Thank you very much indeed. Well, also joining us from Beijing is Aino Tangen. He's an advisor to the Chinese government on economic and development issues, and he's joining us now. Thank you very much indeed for your time, as always, uh, Aina. Let me ask you first, do you think that China regards this as solely an issue between the US and China with regard to the WHO, or is it about wider issues? Yes, I mean, uh, obviously, um, as I said before, uh, China believes that uh, Trump is trying to use this as a political issue for his campaign to say that there's some sort of conspiracy between the WHO and China. Not clear what the WHO would get out of that. But the larger issue is, is what happens to this budget. You know, the U.S. is about 15 percent. Half the money goes to uh, Africa and about uh, 40 percent. Uh, uh, all but 10 percent of the entire budget is really going to developmental areas. Uh, it, it, this is a time when, you know, there, there has to be more uh, cooperation, especially as the needs. I mean, everyone's concentrated on the U.S. and Europe and China. But the fact is, there are so many nations, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, South America, where they have a much weaker health security system. And in that kind of case, you could see real dire results. So. Yeah, people are going to regret that they were arguing about this at this point when they see the tragedies unfolding. 
In the aftermath of, uh, of the, the spread of the virus from Wuhan, China has been working very hard. It's been publicly recorded that it has been working very hard to uh, give medical supplies to some, some of the countries that you mentioned, for example. Is China attempting to improve its image, if you like, given the fact that there was confusion and allegations of a lack of transparency when the virus originally broke? Well, I, I think that's a fact, not an evidence. I, I think China tried its best. Remember, this virus was new when they develop, uh, when they were encountering it. They don't have the uh, the uh, they did not have the luxury of hindsight. They didn't have two months to react and plan and try to figure out what their next move was. Uh, yes, I think there was a bureaucratic incompetency at the local level, but when it got to the national level and they. Uh, you know, decided that this was, in fact, something very serious. They took immediate action. And you can see the results of that in terms of China coming out. I think it is wrong to uh, believe that there's some sort of overarching conspiracy. I've been living here for 15 years. I know a tremendous number of people and both the expat and Chinese community. And quite frankly, I don't know any of them. I keep asking, does anybody know anybody who, who has it? And the answer has been uniformly no. So uh, I, I think, you know, and that's anecdotal, but I can tell you that uh, you just don't see those signs. So it could be that there's a, a narrative out there that's trying to uh, say that there's, you know, what if this happened or what don't we know? I think that is not the point. Right now, the world should be focused on the incredible tragedies that are happening and trying to prevent more of those from happening in the very near future. One of the ways, of course, to do that, as everybody's agreed, is to uh, allow the, the spread of data and particularly the spread of information about uh, any new virus. One of the allegations that was made about the local authorities in Wuhan was that they were, uh, to some degree, concerned about giving bad news to China's central government, and that is what delayed the process. Is there a lesson for the central government and the Communist Party to learn in terms of allowing people to feel more comfortable about passing on news like that? Well, I don't think it's necessarily just unique to China. I think all bureaucracies have a tendency to be very, very cautious. They don't want to spread uh, bad news. In terms of China, they were very quick to start punishing. Many officials were removed. Uh, others have been uh, severely disciplined. Uh, this was not something that uh, uh, the central government was welcoming. So when they took over, you saw a very marked difference, both in accountability and actions that were taken. But, you know, to say this is a Chinese problem is kind of like saying this is a Chinese flu. You know, a pandemic is, doesn't have a nationality. It moves around the world. And human nature is the same way. It's really not a good idea to try, try to nationalize issues like this. As always, good to get your opinion on this, Aina Tangan. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.